Hi, you're listening to Rollout, a Transformers-inspired um, Edge of the Empire podcast. Um, I'm Willis, the DM, and I'm going to pass the mic to the players. Hi, I'm Sophie Goose. I play Potshot, who is operating on seven layers of trauma and counting. Why, why do we... Why is this like a thing I have to think about right now? I have no idea what to say. Uh, hi, I'm Carlos. I play Jump Kick, and yeah, there's, there's nothing more to say. He's, he's not clever enough to come up with something on the spot. Hi, I'm Audrey. Uh, I play High Top. I have one goal, and it's to not fall into another hole. So, <laughs> <laughs> good because I took the holes off the table. <laughs> so your goal we completed. <laughs> we read into so many holes. He had to take it off. And keep, keep your goals achievable. <laughs> Actually, there's your, there's one hole, but it's a different kind of hole. So. <laughs> oh no <laughs> intriguing cool. we're gonna fall into the sarlacc pit everybody <laughs> speaking of what happened last time last time on rollout high top got a scary call from some old friends the old friends started arguing over each other and kept demanding that she's really bumblebee scared the group runs for cover in the nearby city spike quickly rewires jump kicks radio to see if he can track the confused trio oddly they seem to be waiting for them at the prison the group might be walking into a trap, but the break-in has to continue. The group runs into far too many holes at the bottom of the ocean um, and decimates important wildlife in the Bay Area. What will happen now? We pick up moments after Jump Kick killed a beautiful father, uh, shark father with a wife and kids. <laughs> <laughs> so the cloud of red is still fading away and y'all are underwater. Um, <laughs> just because it's easier, we're going to use the initiative from last time once I can find it. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, it might just be easy to re-roll initiative. Then. So yeah, let's roll initiative. Do the um, the old whatever your cunning is. Maybe we can figure out what y'all can do. Okay, uh, that's a failure and a disadvantage. A fa- Shouldn't it be? Do failures pop up? I thought they are. It was only the greens. What? Oh, I m- I might be rolling. Oh right, I put. Sorry, I my bad. All right, that's four successes. Four successes. There we go. Now it's rolling. Um, one success and one advantage. Well, unless you can be the four or lower than a one, uh, you're going second. <laughs> I mean, my totally real plastic dice fell off the table and I had to re-roll them again. <laughs> I got three successes. I got three successes, which is a jump kick record. The high do- the order is going to be high top, jump kick, pot shot. I will give you. Well, I'll open up my map because I don't want y'all to see it until y'all made it. Um, high top and pot shot are halfway, and jump kick is one movement um, behind them. So, for the sake of this, he's within like short range, just so y'all have an idea of how far he is. He's not very far behind, but he is a little bit. Um, and high top's at the top of the order. Let's roll your encounter check on my new and approved table. Oh boy. Can I get someone, probably Audrey, to roll me a d10? On a one or a two, everything's fine. New and improved with a million quotation marks. <laughs> it uh, is new. It's a that's d10. a five. A five? What's, what's the opposite of a hole? Are we just going to run into like mountains or something? Yeah, I, I, I hit a pillar. Yeah, the opposite <laughs> of a hole is a mountain. This time the table's actually all mountains. <laughs> <laughs> Underwater mountains. Okay, so you said five? Yeah found the freaking city of Rila in the middle of the freaking San Francisco Bay. <laughs> I was gonna run into the pillars that hold the sea up. So you hit the new and improved uh, strong current. The underwater current is strong. Make a five purple piloting check or a five purple resilience check. If you fail you get pushed back one movement for each threat. Um, if you succeed you uh, you can push forward to uh, one movement for each uh, advantage. Okay. So the current can either push you forward or push you backwards. And how many purple? Uh, five. Because you are past halfway and it's going to get harder on the past the halfway point. Okay, that's a success and a disadvantage. A success, um, with a success and a disadvantage, you push through, but you're not able to, um, get any extra movement out of it. What else do you want to do with your turn? Um, I think I'll, I won't get pushed far back, but I'll kind of coast on this backwards. I'm just going to stay in robot mode for the most of the rest of this because I don't want any more hamburger crimes occurring. 
So. Oh yeah, hamburger <laughs> comes with me. So I'm gonna coast back <laughs> to uh, Jump Kick and check in on him because it looks like he just got messed up by a shark. Yeah, he did just get messed up by a shark, and then proceeded to mess up the shark. Hey, uh, you need you need a uh, medical assistance? You look a little banged up, Bear. How do we end up? Uh, do we end up deciding if ten wound was bad or not? Yeah, you have 17 max, but you are down to 10. Uh, yeah, I could, uh, I could use a hand. More tired than All right. you've ever seen him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you look pretty rough. Here, let me, let me, let me take a whack at that. Do you want to use your movement to try to go back and help him, or do you want to wait for him to catch up to you? Or do uh, you have something else in mind? I'm just going to use my movement and ride that current back to jump kick, because he's looking a bit messed up. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to roll a medicine check. Uh, that is just one advantage. Okay, so I think it would the check would just be two purple. Because I think the rules if above half, it's an easy check, which is two purple. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just thought it was general roll. Yeah. I'll re-roll. No, it's... If he's under half, then it goes up to three. And then if he's knocked out, it's four. Okay, then that's just one success. One success. You can get one wound back for each success. Okay, well, uh, jump kick and heal one wound. I get out one of those uh, sheets of metal from the car that I peel in Spike's house <laughs> just and just sort of bandage up part of his arm. Oh, you also have stim packs that will immediately give five uh, wounds back. And I think the medicine check is my action, so. Okay. Yeah, so I'm just gonna keep up with jump kick because he's looking rough. That's my turn. So you go back, heal jump kick, give him a little bit of a boost. Uh, heal one wound for him. So we're up to 11. Then that's down to... Actually, that's jump kick's turn. So Hightop's back there with you. She just patched you up from the, the big shark bite you got on the Grilliger alt mode. Do you want to go ahead and... Well, I guess we'll do the uh, encounter check first. Do you want to give me a d10? Oh, yeah. Please don't be in That's a one. <laughs> <laughs> There's no more sharks. There's no more sharks. <laughs> Somehow, like, it's just going to show up and it'll be like, oh, it's a sweet seal. And then it just peels off the seal face like it's a latex max. And, oh, it's the shark's kid. A shark in seal's clothing. Oh, weird. It says shark. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> the D10 just has a picture of a shark on it. It's, hey, maybe it's maybe it's a Beast Wars mutant. Goes from seal to shark. <laughs> yeah, it's a mutant. But, yeah, uh, it was one. A one? Uh, everything's fine and safe. You can uh, proceed forward uh, without caution. Ah. And are you in bot mode or cool. car mode? I think you left off in alt mode. I think I'm still in car mode. And so with our new and improved uh, understanding of how uh, movement works, you can take uh, up to two movement in your alt mode. And then I guess another two, right? If you use all actions for that. Yeah. If you use your maneuver, you can go two. And if you use your action, you can go another two. Uh, are we still, am I still behind everyone? No, uh, high top came back, right? now high top uh, yeah yeah now high tops with you and pot shots ahead okay we just i just move up to try to catch up i guess to uh pot shot since there's nothing left to do you just move up with pot shot i mean we encountered nothing so thanks <laughs> with our new understanding of how the vehicle speeds work he could actually pop up one ahead of pot shot i think yeah because the, the way vehicles yeah the way vehicles do you do have to punch it to get up to two but if he's already moving then he would be at two anyway uh, otherwise basic movement you increase by one so you could use your base movement to move one and then use your action to accelerate to two to move a total of three from a stop or if you're moving already you okay. can go four i guess he would have to stop for you to heal him um to keep this part snappy, we might just say y'all can do everything without stopping. Yeah. <laughs> so y'all can get out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, to keep movement on this part of the thing easy, we're just going to say y'all don't stop. So y'all are at like your full vehicle speed. So, I think that means you can move a total of two with one uh, action. If you want to use two... I guess that can he move four or three? Uh, he can move four if he's already at his max speed from four. a stop. Okay. It's three unless you take strain, and then you can move four with punch it. Okay. How about in order to play off my injuries, I try to move as much as I can without straining myself. 
So that would be two. I uh, I try to move past everyone, or catch up, or maybe even pass a uh, hot shot. Past everyone. Like, oh yeah, I'm, uh, thanks. I'm I'm feeling much better now. He's trying to play down his injuries. Uh, jump He's like, oh, thanks, thanks for the patch up. It wasn't really. Uh, uh, it's it's not as bad as it looks. And then he just tries to take off to prove that there's nothing wrong. No, wait, I'm not done yet. <laughs> 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 so do you want to zoom uh, one past pot shot or do you want to zoom two past hot shot and pot shot just one just one's fine just one yeah, just, just one to show off just enough to prove but also being like ah oh, crap <laughs> yeah he, he speeds off as I'm getting a second uh, big patch pan already <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like stuck on one side so it's just flapping it's like he's driving away <laughs> You got that. That's why it's only one, uh, one wound back because you weren't done. <laughs> He's like, no, I'm not okay. <laughs> okay, so that's next in the order. Uh, pot shot. He's a big boy. I'm sure he'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, basically, seeing. Uh, well, we have to do the encounter roll, don't we? Yeah, one encounter check Two. for me. Okay. Two. You're all fine. There's nothing else under this water. Nothing to be scared of <laughs> under the water. <laughs> While I doubt that, um, Pacha... Well, nothing else, because we already saw everything. <laughs> um, so, Pacha, seeing that um, Jump Kick goes speeding by, just, like, just kind of takes off after him. Just like, is something chasing them? She's not quite sure, but she's going to keep up with her buddies. All right, so you wanna, do you want to move one to keep up with uh, high, uh, with Jump Kick? Yeah. Um, okay. I'm trying to remember based on the last encounter. I'm pretty sure she's in uh, bot mode still, so she'll probably switch to all mode and start following. Okay. To keep the the race moving quickly, um, since you're not, it's not real combat. I'm gonna say that you can take the time to get up to full speed and just do the full like. Um, well, I guess with the transformation and a movement, you can catch up with um, jump kick pretty easy. Gotcha. But since this isn't real combat, I don't want to worry about the um, the, specific. The, the speeding up and slowing down. Because I really want to get to the prison. <laughs> <laughs> well, I see, to do that, we have to stop devastating the local ecology <laughs> and uh, falling into holes. So you transform into alt mode and speed up with a jump kick? Mm-hmm. Okay. Just um, kind of keep pace. And then I added um, Burns and Spike to the uh, initiative because I forgot to roll for them. So Burns happens um, after Pot Shot. Um, and I guess Burns and Spike are both with High Top. And so Burns and Spike are kind of looking out the window. And Burns says, uh, it looks all clear so far. I think all, all the worries might be behind us. And then it goes up to High Top's turn. All right. Well, seeing how everyone sped past me... Um... I think I'm going to use my ability to increase my top speed by one. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a hard piloting check. How many purple dice would that be? Uh, I believe two is hard. Let me go check my clue preference. No, no, don't forget your encounter roll. Uh, three oh, is right. hard. <laughs> oh, yeah, give me the encounter roll first. Don't forget running into your hole or shark. One. <laughs> Everything is fine. There's nothing in the ocean, apparently. Okay. Keyword, apparently. Actually, one of my abilities is uh, removing a difficulty dice, so I guess that's just two purple. Sure. Um, yeah, from piloting checks. So that's uh, two successes, an advantage, and two triumphs. Oh, two triumphs. Uh, a triumph means you crit. Uh, two triumphs is very good. Uh, so <laughs> how fast do you uh, perfectly navigate this? I think uh, what she's going to do, because this is just the action to increase her speed by one, mm -hmm. uh, I think in robot mode she just kind of opens up her chest panel and reaches around to where her T-cog is, sort of grabs some of the busted parts and just rotates them a bit until you hear a snap sound and uh, oh, her boosters come out of her legs. Going into alt mode, the boosters are still out. I'm going to move... A total of six movement. So, six? Yeah, yeah. I go into alt mode as a free action, and then I use uh, a maneuver and another maneuver to go very, very fast. So you solve a Rubik's Cube in your chest to get a, get a huge boost. Yeah. Uh, yeah. High top breaks something, 
but it breaks something in such a way that it moves something into the right spot <laughs> to be fast. So, uh, so yeah, Burns a... and Spike are just kind of shoved back into car mode again into the big hamburger saltwater mess. Oh, and no. then <laughs> and just just space shuttle launch level of G force. <laughs> <laughs> so high top the jump kick. You think someone fires like a torpedo? Or something, you don't know what it is. I think you, maybe for a second you think it, you've been found out and it's a, it's a Decepticon attack. But then you see that this just cloud of bubbles and foam from the speed that which she's going is actually high top. And uh, <laughs> high top, right by. you went so far because we figured out how vehicle movement works between last episode and now. Um, you finished the race. You're at the island. <laughs> oh God! Yeah, I think I, I think I blew past them, and it's like, oh God, no, no, no! no Try no, to no, turn no, off no. the rockets, like deploy <laughs> a parachute. <laughs> Give me a perception check. Do an, do a two purple perception check. <laughs> it's uh, two successes and an advantage. Okay, so you blowing by that the rest of the people. I will give you um. Hi top um some information about what else is um past this leg of the race quote race you see a large crash ship uh, you assume it's gone undiscovered by how little it's disturbed um it's on its side and buried there are some large holes in it no no not holes <laughs> but look at you think if someone were to fall in they could actually skip a portion of the race the equal to the length of the ship you also see that da, 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 something is under the ground here um it's bubbling it looks like if you were to disturb the ground some air pockets would burst and shove you upwards you can also see that real close by to the um to the prison island is a decepticon minefield really the only um it's not even it wouldn't be hard to like move around it's probably because they weren't really expecting an underwater attack it's just like oh we'll throw some mines down there but the biggest thing you see is there is something buried under the water here. Um, you're not sure what it is, uh, but it's giving off a light energon reading. Okay. I notice that as I blow past it, trying to slam on my brakes and put out my air brakes and everything. <laughs> <laughs> and because you finished the race on pretty much from a 7 to a 10 on the encounter check, everyone's checks will be easier. Because they'll be able, to, you basically can give them a warning. Yeah. So just the view from the beach, you do just see this hearse skid to a stop, coming out of the water with a very shocked Burns and Spike in the front seats. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the humans are with her. Yeah. Yeah. Just smoke coming out of the taillights where the boosters were. <laughs> I forgot she was in. Uh, I forgot she was in hearse mode. <laughs> <laughs> the freaking Dragula just eats itself onto the beach. <laughs> to avoid any unnecessary stealth checks, I'll, n I'll say that High Top knows that she should probably stay at least under the water until the rest of the group checks up on her. Yeah, I, I back I back up into the into the ocean again. There's just like two skid marks. You rock it out of the ocean and then it's like boop, boop, boop. <laughs> <laughs> Slowly just sits back into the water. <laughs> I, I, I relayed that stuff back to everyone. Yeah, there's like a, a ship and, I don't know, some bubbles, I guess. It looks like something's buried here with Energon, though. Sorry to have a five-minute turn uh, on to whoever's next. <laughs> um, whoever's next is uh, Spike. Spike says, like, <laughs> I think he's like, whoa, holy, oh my god. And he's gonna do a uh, constitution check, because <laughs> I think it's funny. <laughs> Oh, it's his constitution. I'll say it's uh, it's his willpower, which is not good. <laughs> uh, Spike throws up. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's like, oh, high top. I'm I not. Was... Uh... Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> and then you hear Burns like, no, not on my shoes. No, I'm just like, oh, no, no, I no, got no. on the backpack. <laughs> Yeah, I'm radioing back to y'all, and you just hear, yeah, if there's a mine. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> they, they immediately assume that it's an attack, but then they just hear Spike. <laughs> the 
poor kid. This poor kid. Poor high top. <laughs> Spike says, uh, uh, "I'm sorry, high top. I I I ate Burns. Uh, uh, I ate, I ate his burger because he dropped it. He didn't want to eat it. It was I, I ate too much. I'm sorry." <laughs> he also says, uh, after he like wipes cleans himself up, he's like. I am a bit disappointed, though. I thought we'd at least run into a uh, crusty. It's like uh, uh, there's reports of a cryptid um, in the Bay Area. But we've kind of named him Crusty. I really thought we'd find him down here. Um, and then that goes to the jump kick's turn. Um, all right. Am I out of the? No, I'm still in the water. Just saw. Uh... Yeah, you're still in the water. Okay, so I I try to <laughs> try to move up. I guess to what, what would I need to catch up to uh, to uh, high tops rocket blasting out of the water um if you move yeah. you're you're at full speed so he can move two movements right audrey because the vehicles are two speed yeah you can use a movement to go two and then use your action to do another movement to go another two kind of like a dash in D. so if you dashed uh, if you if you used all your movement this turn you would catch up with high top all right I catch. Oh, also I rolled a seven on the encounter. Oh, you rolled a seven? Oh wait, do I have to encounter again? I forgot about that. <laughs> there, there is nothing more intimidating than a DM going ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get um. So you see, um, and you'll be able to add. Uh, well, yeah, you'll make this check easier. So you get that radio, and you're uh, and you're like, high top's like, yeah, there's a crash ship down there, and so you're rocketing by. And you do see that there is a uh, crashed uh, cargo ship of some sort buried under the sand here. Give me a four purple or four athletic, uh, four purple piloting or a four purple athletics check to avoid the ship. And then if you um, don't fall in, you can use all your movement to catch up. I'm sorry, what was that uh, die again? What's the amount? Four. Four purple. It was going to be five, but the high top went very, very fast. <laughs> Uh, two successes and four threats. Two successes and four yep. threats. So I'm not going to use the threats for anything because you don't always have to spend them. So you rocket over this ship. You see some. There are some pretty weak spots on it. You know if you were to drive your heavy car alt mode over these uh, weak spots on the ships, you would you would fall in. And you can kind of glance at it. It's really dark down there, so seeing would be difficult. Okay. Do you want to use all your movement to catch up with uh with high top? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, do. I will do that. Right. And nothing else so you carefully rock it forward <laughs> carefully <laughs> and meet up with high top let's let's be honest i luckily rock it forward luckily luckily, <laughs> luckily. <rocket forward. laughs> as you catch up you just see high top parked in the shallows not moving <laughs> not talking just a bunch of vomit in the front seat no <laughs> <laughs> Uh, high top has some rules about her alt mode now. <laughs> I like the uh, I like the visual of high top just kind of like an alligator, just like top of the car, showing off of the water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Also, two big rocket boosters hanging off the back of. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's uh, down to pot shot. Will roll me that encounter check? I'm gonna hope it's a ten because I, oh, I made a thing. Really, a ten or a nine? Because nine makes two things happen. Mm -hmm. Oh. Ten. God Ooh. damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so Pot Shot sees um, High Top and then Jump Kick zoom past her and she realizes that for the first time she's alone underneath the ocean and the um, the ground directly below her starts moving and adjusting itself and yeah. right below Pot Shot um, comes out of the ground a large Massive crab. Hey, Krusty! Ah! <laughs> and Pasha, give me a perception check. Uh, it's real easy, so just one purple perception check. Okay. Do you have your big rubber bands on hand? <laughs> <laughs> Three successes. Three successes? Okay, so you see uh, on top of this, what you know is a crustaceacon. <laughs> uh, I'm very proud of that. Um, is this faction symbol? Can you please describe it to the group? <laughs> it's oh, in the Discord. <laughs> I made so, it this morning. <laughs> what it is? I top thinks is. this is appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> so, what the faction symbol is? Is it a uh, 80 style? 
uh, Decepticon logo, wearing a pirate hat with a movie-style Decepticon logo on it. <laughs> <laughs> and you know that the Crustaceacons were a group of uh, Cybertronian uh, pirates that disappeared um, a couple years back, or well, a couple, I guess, a couple cycles back. Um, and their captain was, and then as he gets lifted up in the air by this just size of a semi truck, um, crab, um, it screams, Who woke up Captain Ironclaw? You're hard. You're hard. And then um, I don't think he can see it because he's really far away, but I think um, he does. <laughs> Spike looks like, says, Oh shoot, it's Krusty! I knew he was real. <laughs> Thank you, Spike. Don't talk, Spike. Not right now. <laughs> he says no, Krusty's great. I love Krusty. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I just wanna I wanna I wanna intersect real quick, interject real quick. And, uh, so that you went with Crustaceacons when you could have just gone with Salticons. I like Crustaceacon. <laughs> As soon as I saw that pirate hat, as soon as I saw that pirate the pirate hat, I just thought about the first thing in my head was salty crabs for some reason. <laughs> I spent all morning on this salty pirate crab. Decepticon badge. <laughs> I will not be taking criticism. It's a, it's a nice it's a nice logo. I'll give you that. It's it says what it needs to say. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, boss shot. Um, I'm gonna roll for this guy, but you're still gonna get the rest of your turn. Okay. I'm just gonna roll his uh, initiative, but because you've woken him up, even if he rolls higher than you, you're still gonna get your turn. Like, he's confused. Gotcha. So he's not gonna be able to get, like, a surprise or anything. Oof. Okay. Alright, so what do you wanna do? You've just woken up, uh, Krusty, also known as Iron Claw, <laughs> a Decepticon so... pirate. When he woke up, it was like uh, right underneath him, right? Yeah, right underneath you. So I'm imagining that like he woke up and just like Hotshot, just like her little compact car mode, just went like dink off the back of him and got like launched into the air, like <laughs> just like up into the water a bit. And I'm imagining what she's gonna do is just like, you know, probably scream a little bit, which <laughs> is like a little like ah, <laughs> just like. And be like, wait to hit the ground, and then just punch it towards the others. Just like, just punch it towards the others. <laughs> like, she got surprised. It's at close range. She's not fighting a giant crab. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you use all your movement, you can catch up with the with the others. You want to do that instead of trying to fight Krusty? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me know what like, check that is. <laughs> I don't know if this game has. Uh, opportunity attacks, but I'm gonna say it does. I'm still gonna attack off at you for running away. <laughs> and do you have any um, defense or armor on um, your character sheet no. so I can do this right? No? no? Okay. So he is going to, in crab mode, use kind of an opportunity attack. Um, also, I don't know if this game has those. Don't at me. <laughs> it's like a reaction attack. Yeah. <laughs> um, he hits... Um, and you take... Da, 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 da. What's your soak? Uh, two. Two? Jesus Christ. Um, and how much wounds do you have? Uh, twelve. Twelve? Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's not going for lethal damage. He's just trying to grab onto you. But he does take you down to, uh, one wound. <laughs> Jeez. Of all the places... Pacha thought she might die. It would not be at the bottom of a freaking organic planet being thrown around by a crustacean gun. So, I don't think he actually grabs you, because I think that'd be OP, offer a reaction. But he try he reaches out to you with his claw, and he's like, Oi, where are you going? And um, this big claw um, just crushes part of um, your alt mode. Um, Yikes. Not permanently crushing, not like critical injury, but like crushes part of your alt mode. And um, you still get all that movement, though. So. Okay, so in that case, like, there's definitely going to be a scream at this point. Uh, <laughs> mostly in pain, this is probably the most noise you've ever heard Pot Shop make. And just like the sound of just like, <laughs> like, just like the wheels, like on the back end, just like thunking. 
because one of them's been misshapen and she's just hobbling as fast as she can over to the other. So you roll up with a damaged, uh, damaged kind of everything. <laughs> Just gonna, like, yeah, I imagine it looks like a car that had a tree fall on it. Yeah. Oh yeah, it definitely like, looks like that. <laughs> I'm just imagining like what this must look like to the others. Like there's just this giant silhouette of a crab. There's a very loud scream from someone on their team who's usually very quiet, and then just coming out and looks completely crushed and barely is able to come to a stop next to them. <laughs> also, give me a um. I think it's gonna be like a. Probably a presence or a cunning check. Let me try to find a spot for it. Um, I guess like a streetwise would work. A vigilance. Um, something that would say like your just your ability to see why it attacked you. Okay. Um, let, let me do streetwise. Streetwise. And, uh, how many? How many purple would that be? I don't think it'd be very hard. I'll just make it two purple. Okay. Um, and this is just your passive like being able to read Cybertronian body language and seeing why it attacked you. Okay. Said two purple. Yeah, two purple. Uh, one success and two advantages. Uh, one success, two advantages. Uh, you can get adva- you can choose to use the advantages for something if you want, but um, <clears throat> you know just from like being attacked by this thing, being a Cybertronian, knowing Cybertronian like body language, just like knowing like I, everyone's kind of heard stories about like the Crustacea Con pirates. Um, their captains tend to be quite large and not that bright and not knowing their own strength. It is a really good possibility he wasn't actually trying to attack you, that he was just like, you woke him up, he turned around, and with this is like kind of passive strength that caused that kind of damage on you. Okay, so do I have any actions left? Use both your actions to move up all the way, so I don't think so. You can have a free action of talking. Okay, talking then. So, like, she's just very feebly, like, sitting here, crumpled up, a freaking Yamcha getting space punched into the ground kind of position. She's gonna go, like, yeah, sorry! (laughs) 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 Poor Bajas. Crumpled like an aluminum can. (laughs) Okay, and then he rolled really good. Um, he, so he's now at the top of the order, uh, but he's also incredibly slow. So he only moves forward um, one. Um, and he's screaming, just like, get back here, waking me up, finding my hiding spot. Um, all these damn humans trying to rat me out. And he's just kind of like on tiny crab legs, like comparatively like tiny crab legs, um, inching towards y'all. <laughs> But Not to be everyone... that person, but he can he also use his action to move another movement towards us. Um, yeah, he can. He's going to do that. So he's slightly closer to you. He uses two movement to get closer to you. Um, you see this massive semi-truck. Um, sh- Not semi-truck shape. This giant semi-truck sized crab shape. Just like kind of slowly just approach. He- he's very slow. That would be High Top's turn. And y'all are at... Um, the base of the Alcatraz Island. Um, you don't see any entrance or anything like that yet. So if you can give me a, let me see how hard this is. So there. I'm just gonna put in the uh, chat real quick. I actually have a robot crab transformer figure. Um, it's not a transformer transformer. It's all mode as a box, but I'm just imagining this while we're oh, doing those, all this. Yeah, those beast boxes are cool. Yeah. Yeah, I want to get to see some of those. I really like them. I have a bunch. At 52 Toys, I'll do promo for you. Email me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think it, it might be hard because of the pressure of a giant beast coming towards you or a giant crab monster coming towards you. High Top, you can give me a free um, three purple um, like perception check to try to find some way into the island. Uh, that's a failure and an advantage. A failure and advantage? I'm gonna say that you don't find it, but the advantage is that you know you're looking in the right spot. And I think you could make the check easier for the next person. There is evidence that they have been down here and installed maybe some sort of emergency exit doors. You just can't find it. It's like, because the base of the island has like, moved some rocks and there's like metal underneath it and they've definitely made modifications. Uh, but you can't quite find a door, but you can make the next check easier. All right. One. Yeah, uh, I go up to the other two. Uh, I look at Potshot and be like, I think there's a door over there. Y'all should check that out. 
if this boy comes on the land, everyone's going to know we're here. I'm going to go try to make him shut up. Uh, please get inside, because if it goes bad, he will kill you. <laughs> and I hand off my backpack to Jump Kick, because uh, I don't want to bring Spike any closer to this thing. Yeah, it can definitely detach, uh, keeping the human yeah. the NPCs safe. Just hand off the human. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I guess I go into robot mode. I go into robot mode before this, uh, and just hand the backpack to y'all with a uh, so, spike and a burn. So I that... have a question. Is, able, yeah, is uh, Potshot able to, like, at this point, I don't know if this is, like, between turns or if she's already done our actions, given how beaten up she is, just, like, is she able to just, like, pull High Top aside and, like, give her a piece of advice based on what she knows? Um, yeah, talking is always a free action if y'all want to communicate yeah. to her, to each other. She's just gonna be, like, very weakly like speaking just like just like kind of like waves her aside or like motions for her to go closer and she's just very quietly it's like be polite and tell him I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> alright I mean you got it I'm a delight you know how I am with, with other cops Podshot's just thinking back to all the moments that have happened so far of High Top maybe being a little too blunt with humans and just like oh god <laughs> Please, Primus, uh, see us through this okay. moment. <laughs> Hide on the rest of the turns yours. I imagine as I go into robot mode, you see a bunch of uh, vomit and hamburger just kind of waft out of the joints. It's Some small like... fish start eating it up around you. <laughs> 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 yeah, y'all, y'all start heading towards that door. If things go bad, I'm fast enough to get away from them. And I'm going to walk back towards this man, feeling very naked without my backpack this giant crab man and i'm just gonna be like greetings comrade this is a uh, high top of the decepticon space command i didn't mean to disturb you we were coming to check in the shockwave uh can i have your designation please uh give me a oh, you said a lot of right high top's a decepticon she knows <laughs> protocol give me a so you tell me are you trying to coerce him into telling you something or is this just a like uh Stand down, calm down, we're supposed to be here. Okay, you can use your... I think the best thing would be coercion. I'm higher rank than you. I think the best thing would probably be coercion. Oh. Um, I think generally trying to talk this guy down would be uh, like a three purple check, but just because I, I like how you told him that, like, hey, we're trying to find out stuff about Shockwave. Like, Shockwave's here, calm down. I think that made it a little bit easier. So you can, um... Three purple, two green, and you can add a blue dice to that too. Oh, uh, I have three green to coercion. Oh, sorry, I probably, probably just looked at the same wrong skill. So three green, three purple, and then a blue. Just because you're saying the right stuff. And also, he's not smart. Uh, so. That is a success and two advantages. <laughs> so I just I square up to this crab and pull rank on him, and I imagine he walks up to me but then stops. <laughs> And I stand there expecting a, a salute because I'm technically higher rank than him in the space command. <laughs> you also know that because he's a pirate, he's not technically Decepticon aligned, so he might not care about the rank. He's probably just reacting to like you name dropped a very scary person to even like the strongest uh, rogue agents. Yeah, I stand there looking slightly perturbed and disappointed. Like we're here for a reason. Stand down. What are you doing? I think he lifts both. He meets you in the middle and he lifts both of his like giant crab claws in the air. Each one is like the size of your alt mode. Um, slams them on the ground and the back of the shell like splits open during his transformation. Um, the crab claws stay his arms and legs, but then out from the shell, a very pudgy robot mode uh, falls out of it. He has um, not he has a beard but it's not made out of like cybertronian things it's just like seaweed and stuff that's got clogged up in his like face mask over time um rotten like fish bones hanging out of his like faceplate and it makes it big a uh, human beard i love it <laughs> and he says davy jones ass bitch. <laughs> nice he says whoa, whoa now you the shock shock wave um uh, li listen, little one of, I'm just hiding out here, you know. Didn't really want to be part of the war effort, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, and he, like, uh, tips his little, like, pirate hat at you. 
<laughs> he's a he's a trap dodger. <laughs> oh, so you're <laughs> avoiding the war? He's like, yeah. I, uh, are you working with Shockwave? Because <laughs> if that's the case, no, I crashed. Oh no, that actually makes it much easier. We're also defectors. Oh, defectors, and he's like. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, sorry. That's like a super old nothing rank I pulled it on you. We're here to see what Shockwave's up to. We didn't mean to step on you, though. Uh, howdy, I'm High Top, the one you almost killed as Bar- pot shot. Very weakly in the distance, you hear. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> sorry. He's very <laughs> sorry. He says his massive claw towards you, and he's like, ah, honor among pirates, honor among cowards. And he, like, extends his claw as a handshake, but it's, like, the size of you. I shake it. <laughs> I shake it. <laughs> honor among conscientious objectors. Uh, you say conscientious, and he's like, yeah. <laughs> he said, sorry, I'm, hiding, I'm used to hiding out down here, and, uh, ho, 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 um, the, the, the human the the people that live here keep trying to take pictures of me trying to keep uh get in my business i'm just trying to hide out under the dirt until everything blows over you know <laughs> he starts like coughing up like fish <laughs> i think at this point i might just lead him over to the party and do introductions <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I like you. I'll introduce <laughs> you to everyone. Try to stay below water. I don't want anyone to see us. Um, it's a very movie-verse uh, character movement I'm hearing from this. Y'all are way deep underwater, but he's pretty big, and he's still um, not in danger of like um, poking his head out of the water or anything like that, but he is walking with like a bit of a hunch. Um, I'm not sure if he's trying to keep a low profile or if he's just been in salt water for who knows how long. And so he uh, starts uh, waddling out with you, long. walking really slow. He still has proportionally very tiny legs <laughs> as he walks. I- I'm just imagining like a Mr. Krabs style body. Yeah, body. Mr. Krabs <laughs> with uh, massive arms. Yeah. So I-, I introduce him to everyone as High Top walks up with her new horrifying friend. <laughs> he uh, tips his hat. Uh, Sorry about the the little grab there. Huh, sometimes I don't know my own strength. <laughs> He costs up more fish. <laughs> Pod Josh is very feebly like, it's fine. <laughs> uh, I really like this I story. love him. He, like, He's my favorite. He sounds like a great guy. Can he adopt me with my new old mom? <laughs> <laughs> he reaches into a compartment and he's like, I give you something to, to heal up. Didn't really mean to cause you that much, uh, cause you that much hurt, you know? Um, and he takes out like a stim pack, but it's like rusted from all the, uh, years it's under the ocean uh, but i don't know if i have anything that could uh help <laughs> oh thanks yeah I'll, I'll give that to her in a bit i'm imagining like pacha trying to transform and take it but it's just like the most creaking painful <laughs> transformation you've ever heard like there's just like oils everywhere and like clunking noises and awful stuff and it just looks like freaking you know, she was made out of rubber and then run over by a car and then squished and then put in an oven for 400 <laughs> degrees for 25 minutes to deglaze and then just like just barely clunking around trying to reach for it and then falling forward. Like, but it's fine. <laughs> I just take it from him. I'll give it to her in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. I start polishing the needle because it's very nasty. This might be more useful as poison than uh, actual medicine. Um, he asks you, um, he says, uh, the big one said, um, you're, you're, you're messing around with Shockwave? I didn't really know he was uh, in the area. Um, and he starts like um, moving back and forth, moving back and forth like nervously. Yeah, he's on the island. He's, uh, he looks back at you with the island behind you and is like, ah, okay. Yeah, bad hiding spot if you're trying to avoid him, honestly. <laughs> he says, uh, I think technically I might have been here first. I thought, I mean, I have, I thought I was the only one on this rock. He's like, me and my crew lost a, huh, lost a big battle back in the day, and we, you know, just landed here, <laughs> waited for the war to blow over, waited for my, uh, bounty to go away, you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, now I'm just imagining what other sea monsters this this man and his crew are responsible for. <laughs> Did one of y'all go down over Scotland? 
<laughs> What's a Scotland? Oh, I didn't uh. have that in character. <laughs> Get, out, get, get back behind the fourth wall. But... Uh, he says, uh, "I feel bad about the damage I caused um, the 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 little one. Um, is there anything I can do? I mean, I don't want y'all to rat me out, but uh, can I make this even? I mean, I think he's a delight. I don't want anything from him, but if he wants something, you're the one that got crushed." Pacha's just sitting there in horrible, crumped up, crumpled up robot mode and just kind of looks at her and just like very silently just like makes it and goes like, I don't <laughs> she's like, she's done with the day already. It's over. <laughs> can can I have him help me with a medical check? Uh, yes? Yes. Alright, uh. I think what she wants is so, not to die. <laughs> we'll put it that way. He can help. Um, I'll tell you, um, this is a this guy has rancor stats and his intellect is one, so you might not <laughs> want him to help you. <laughs> it's it's what High Top would do. She is very <laughs> hospitable, but uh, <laughs> so I think uh, hey uh, Pacha, can you get back into your alt mode if you can? Just- Silently starts and just more awful creaking and crumbling and just like just sits there after a while and just like a very very quiet whimper like ow. Like. Uh, so you grab onto this piece of the roof. Uh, I'm gonna grab these pieces here and uh, we're gonna pull <laughs> it straight. So I don't have enough hands. Can you help me with that? Um, <laughs> oh, no. I'll say he's not very smart, but. If you tell him what to do, he'd be helpful, especially in something like that, which kind of sounds like resetting a leg. Like, he would definitely hold something still. And because... Yeah, I'm just going to have him basically pull the roof up and then uh, patch up all the holes as they open. Uh, <laughs> I'm a good medic. I have two green to medicine. Uh, you can also, <laughs> for an injury like this that is like broken bones, the equivalent of broken bones and stuff, you can also use uh, mechanics if it's higher. They're not. Okay. They're not. I'm not a very good <laughs> medic. I okay, am a medic. So, <laughs> I will tell you that um, if someone's under half health, which Potshot is, a uh, sitting right at one, um, it's going to be a four purple medicine check. Um, he can give you one blue, and I would also say if Jump Kick's helping, he can also give him an additional blue. Uh, hey, Jump Kick, can you give a assistance with this. Uh, I give him some band-aids to start covering places as we uncollapse pot shot. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I'll, 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 <laughs> sure. And I, I think I'm still holding the backpack, so I just kind of put it down with all the humans in it. <laughs> <laughs> so all I've right. been standing there the uh, whole time while crabs are here, just holding a backpack with humans in Spike it. How are Spike and Burns just handling this, staring out the window? <laughs> I don't think there's a window in the backpack. Aw. They're just gonna pop their head up later and be like, ah. Uh. I like the idea that Burns is inside, they can't see anything. He's like, is that a, is that a sea pirate captain I hear? What's going on there? Yeah, like, all they can hear is the voices and, like, it's just the horrible, like, kaiju level, like, <laughs> like, shaking as he Yeah, it cuts, the like, camera cuts to inside the backpack and they both have their, like, scuba gear, like, on, ready for it, like, things to go bad. <laughs> Alright, so... I say pull, he basically uh, yanks up the collapsed mm-hmm. roof in rear section of pot shot as uh, I start welding patches in place. That's two successes and four disadvantages. So I'm just welding patches in place while Jump Kick is handing me supplies. I'm going to say with something important like that, like with, I don't know, this scenario, I say the disadvantage is not necessarily do anything, but you can get um, two wounds back, a wound per... Um, Actually, I'll say if y'all are taking, are y'all taking your time before you go into the next thing? Yeah, I mean okay. this is field surgery basically. Because I don't like the healing rules for Edge of the Empire. I want to say you can get two back for each, so you can get at least four. Kind of double it because you're taking your time and you have all these people helping, so you can get up to four wounds back. I know that's still not a lot. So by the end of it, you kind of look like one of those demolition derby cards that's been crushed and then hammered back into a car shape. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining this whole time she's doing the robot equivalent of just like biting into her arm to not scream. <laughs> like, like, no, I'm just not having a good time. <laughs> just kind of, 
just like coming out of it, just looking completely bruised and dented. <laughs> like one, like the little uh, horn that's left on her head for her ornament. Like now that one's busted <laughs> too. Like, <laughs> and uh, I, I finish up with a, a stim pack for five wounds. So you heal a total of nine wounds. Good team effort, everyone. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Potshot's just gonna look around and just like thank everyone individually. Uh, no problem. That's what I do. It's probably one of the sweeter things that she's done. <laughs> um, I think before um, Captain Ironclaw disappears, he says, um, "As long as you don't uh, rat me out, <laughs> um, I owe you one." I think we're. We're even. We do have one thing, and I'll call us even. Yeah, how can I'm I help? I'm gonna put on the backpack and uh, go into alt mode and sort of shove everyone forward back into the front seat. Mm-hmm. Hey, Spike, you want to meet uh, old Krusty is what you were calling him? <laughs> yeah, Spike gets really excited. It's like, yeah! <laughs> yeah, just sort of roll up and be like, yeah, he's not going to take pictures, but he thinks you're really cool and he wanted to meet you. He's like pressing his face against like the glass, and he's like, "Oh man, you're like a legend! I told all the kids at <laughs> school you were real." Um, and he's just like excitingly like out of words, like uh, fogging up the windshield because he's like breathing heavy. <laughs> I turn on the deep roster. <laughs> uh, I think Iron Claw uh, wants it, like leans forward, and he's like completely over it. Like there's a shadow that takes over um, <laughs> high top, and he just kind of tips his hat. He's like, good to meet you, little one. Tell your friends to stop bothering me. And he like, shakes his crab claw <laughs> angrily. <laughs> um, Spike's like, okay, yeah, no problem. I'll tell him to stop. And like, kind of goes from excited to scared. <laughs> and I think It's fine. He's very nice, I think. But... <laughs> I think he, um, after that, he turns back into his uh, big crustacean Crustacea con alt mode and like scampers off like sideways, like waving at y'all. Alright. <laughs> if you're ever up north, uh, you should stop by Rose's place. I think she'll like you. Hotshot's going to attempt a very like weak <laughs> little wave. <laughs> he waves and like scampers off sideways. And that guy was great. Sorry he almost killed you. <laughs> Potshot very much not being able to bluff at this point goes I've had worse like (laughs) coughs up like a little like like, cloud of oil (laughs) this was the the patent D&D fight of there are big things out there (laughs) yeah we walked into the zone that we're not level 4 hi Krusty I forgot (laughs) (laughs) so now y'all are at the the base of the island Um, high top pointed out that uh there looks like to be metal underneath the, the island, like some modified, um, like they, they definitely have modified the lower part of the island, but she didn't quite find the door, but she told you that um, the door was near. I think it was a three purple um, perception check. So anyone can do, um, she dropped the difficulty of it um, down to two. So anyone can do a two purple, and if at least one person passes, y'all can find the door. One advantage. One advantage. Jump kick, you want to try to find the door? Just two purple sure. and uh, whatever your perception is. I'll tell you right now, it's not great. <laughs> <laughs> two purple's not that hard. Y'all should be able to find the door. <laughs> uh, three successes and four threats. Okay, you can... Uh, the th- I don't think the threats will mean anything. Y'all can easily f- uh, you easily find the door. Um, you move over to some like, big underwater boulders, and there's this uh, Cybertronian scale uh, hatch. Um, you, you find under the water. Uh, hey guys, I think there's a door down here. Oh, red. Shit around. I go help him move shit around. <laughs> that was easy. It's labeled, it's covered in like Cybertronian yellow tape that says like caution, emergency exit. <laughs> I check for text that say alarm will sound if door is open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I do not stop to check for anything. Uh, there's nothing that says alarm will sound. Yeah, it doesn't seem like there's any um, alarms that would sound off if the door was open. It's uh, just kind of an emergency um, if they needed to leave. But I don't think there's anything that would be like alarms would sound if the door was open. Doesn't look like it's ever been used, though. We open the door? Open the door. It's it's not really locked as much as it is a um, heavily, almost like the, the water pressure and like kind of uh, this... The, what happens to metal underwater it's kind of like rusted and locked into place from like 
natural causes. Um, so give me a three purple um, athletics check to see if you can open the door. Yeah, I guess while everyone's uh, looking and talking about the door, High Top just being the stupid queen she is, just tries to open it. <laughs> Yeah, you see that the door is like rusted, almost rusted shut, and this big, heavy metal Cybertronian scaled bar is on the front of it. Um, oh. It's not really locked, but when you start to pull, there's like this water pressure that's holding it back. That's a lot of successes and a lot of failures, but I think it comes out to one success. One success? I would say uh, it's pretty hard to do. Um, you can hear like your, all the little motors and like. Um, things inside your, your Cybertronian arms like straining but um, you finally pull pull the door open I think with pretty much all of your body weight um, to offset the water pressure there's a moment where you're expecting the water pressure to like flow back in but when you open it there's a blue almost force field like you know this is a projection wall they're used on like windows of ships that um, would be in space but you still have to leave um, so they kind of hold out the force of space, so it's easily able to hold out the force of like the ocean. It, it keeps the water from it, uh, pouring inside the base. And it seems dark inside, almost like this is like um, maybe a forgotten about hallway under here. An old storage room. They're not putting anything. Yeah. Yeah. After that, I do turn back towards everyone. So, what's the plan? We're looking for Energon or a way to make it. We're looking for a T-Cog, and we're looking for a... Sorry, my accent keeps waving in and out. It's hard to remember, but... Uh, <laughs> so, Energon, the T-Cog, and also information on Shockwave's nonsense, and if there's a way we can stop it, because he's evil. That's the general goal. Pacha just nods. Like, at this point, she's almost died today. <laughs> Anything that happens is gonna happen. <laughs> Burns speaks up and he's like, uh, I'd l I, I wouldn't mind getting rid of whatever, um, if they have some, I don't know, pretender production down there that we could get rid of, and he, um, shakes that backpack he had around. Pretender's a good name, we should call him that, because they, like, pretend to be humans. He's like, yeah, thanks, uh, I just thought of it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to chime in oh, with my opinion and be like, yeah, if there's, uh, war weapons and if they're gonna try to start war here, too, we should... We should probably stop that. It's, it's gonna be no bueno for this planet. Pacha just nods and looks around and says, Wherever you guys are going, I'm going to. Yeah, I agree. They already fucked up Cybertron. I like this planet, and it doesn't deserve their nonsense. So, whatever we find, we'll mess it up. And if we happen to find a T-Cog along the way, that'll be nice. At around this time, you hear like a grindy, snappy sound from High Top's chest as the boosters <laughs> pop back in. Because it only does it for a few rounds. <laughs> um, and I will let you know as a DM talking to players. To keep the stealth checks to a minimum, we're going to do group stealth checks for every area y'all enter. You only need one success to pass the stealth check. So if you have any extra, you can pass it to another person in your group. Gotcha. Also, so y'all don't get caught immediately. Um, it's a little overpowered, but I think for making it an entertaining podcast... Y'all have a stealth drive, and you can turn a total of four failures into a success. Uh, but once you do it um, four times, it runs out of battery. Um, you don't have to use it all on one check. You can just kind of spend it as it goes. Does that make sense for everybody? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So are we all rolling the stealth, or is it like one person yeah. rolls? Everyone will roll. The difficulty will change depending on the area. But if you have any extra successes, you can pass it to someone that has a leftover failure. Okay. Okay. Okay, so for the initial entering the building, it's just going to be uh, a three stealth check because it seems to be maybe an abandoned part of the facility. The three purple and then whatever your stealth is. I got a wash. Oh, wow. A wash? I immediately, two failures and one threat. Two failures, one threat. Okay. How many, how many purple was Three. Okay. Let's see how this goes. Two advantages. Two advantages, so no one got a success. I think I'll, no do, one a, succeeds. I think I'll do a strain <laughs> so we don't immediately fuck it up. Okay. And then do um, Carlos and Sophie want to use uh, some of the points from the stealth drive to immediately sneak in? Um, 
Am I able to do a strain too? Uh, did you just get a wash? Uh, no, I got the two advantages. Oh yeah, since you don't have a failure, you can spend a strain to uh, make a, okay, uh, make it a success. I'll spend a strain. And then Carlos, how many failures did you have? Two failures and one threat. I immediately hit something and knocked things over as we get in. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can use two points out of the stealth drive to make this a pass, but then you only have two more points left. Mm, I think, but what's uh, funnier? With my success, I come in okay, and then Jump Kick comes in, immediately knocks over something, and my strain is just high top catching, like, four big buckets that he knocked off a shelf. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, Jump Kick, do you want to use the Stealth Drive, or do you want to save it? I'd say save it for when there's actually something around. I'm not going to tell you the bad thing about failure until... I'm imagining just for flavor purposes, I imagine that Potshot's strain is like, she goes to like, cr- like step in and like crouch and start sneaking around and just something with how she's been crumpled today, like something creaks so she immediately has to stop, back up, and then go into a different, less comfortable position to sneak. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like Elle's flavor for the sneaking in. But Carlos, with your failure, something bad does happen with a failure. Um, I'm not going to tell you what that is okay. until... Until it happens. happens, but you can make it a success <laughs> with the stealth drive. I'll leave that up to you. <clears throat> I don't know how does uh, out of game. How does everyone feel about that? It's fine. <laughs> Failures happen and they're entertaining. I'm I'm interested <laughs> to find out what happens. Yeah. It, oh. Although if it's a hole, it'd be extra fun. Oh no! Okay. Two <laughs> idiots in high tops and Peter to death or something. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> We'll keep the one failure just to keep it interesting. Okay, so you get the failure, and how many threats did you have? One. One threat. One. So y'all sneak into this room. Uh, jump kick sneaks in, knocks something over. Uh, high top catches it. Pie shot has to sneak in with her, her uh, damaged and creaking body. Oh, I'd like to point out that I was probably doing one of those cartoony sneaky ends where it, like, tiptoes <laughs> and then knocks things over. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> And then the lights come on, and there is one pretender looking like he's uh, cleaning something up in the dark, just staring at you. Um, is it a Burns? He doesn't look like Burns. He looks like a um, just a random soldier. Uh. Well, I mean, Burns looks like a random soldier. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he looks like a different random okay. soldier. He doesn't look like Burns. Uh, what can we do? Grab him! <laughs> or actually, no, I don't want to roll initiative every time. So um, y'all can do... I decided um, the other day in the group chat that um, if you fail a stealth check and there's an enemy left, you can make the same check but with your weapon skill to see if you can immediately like, conk them on the head and knock them out. So since it was jump kick's failure, jump kick, you can make a three purple weapons check to see if you can bop them on the head really hard to okay. knock them out. Hold on, let me find my weapons... Is it labeled under weapons? And you can it? use any of your weapon stats. Um, except for probably gunnery. <laughs> yeah, I can't use gunnery for that. Uh, okay, I'll use... <laughs> is... Hmm. Is brawl a weapon stat? Yeah, brawl would be like your punching. Okay. So it could be three purple and then your brawl if you want to use brawl. Old dies. Uh, three successes and one threat. All right, so yeah, you can do it. How, you, you, <laughs> what do you do? Do you punch him in the face really hard, really quickly? <laughs> no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like, ah, and I, like, how do I say this? Like close fisted, like hitting an alarm clock, just hitting on the top of the head, straight down. <laughs> 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 yeah. So y'all sneak in. You're like, okay, I think we made it. Uh, he flips the light switch, and he's just staring at these three massive robots, and then jump kick a tree with like an alarm clock in. <laughs> Smashes him down like a coke can. <laughs> I want, I'd like to. I like to imagine that his head like actually goes into his body and then he just stops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It just like wires and sparks are sticking out. He's like with his head like collapsed in, and he just falls down. Oh, I I didn't mean to go that hard. It's really good that was a pretender and not just like a human. Yeah, this would be a different podcast. Burns responding to. Um, I, they're in their back. They're in the backpack, unless y'all want them to. Actually, no. I think they would have came out. So all, the, so all they hear is just, "Wow, I'm glad that wasn't a human." 
Uh, no, actually, I think I think they come out and Burns is like, oh, holy shit, and then just collapse the stone. <laughs> I also apologize. Um, and Spike's to the, just uh, standing there. It's like I apologize to the Pretender. <laughs> uh, sorry, little dude. I, I didn't mean to go that hard. Uh, and I'm not gonna make Spike and Burns roll stealth checks. So I'm not gonna make an NPC ruin things for y'all like that. Appreciate you. And Spike's just like, I'm so glad y'all are on our side. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, I think for Spike and Burns, uh, the backpack, I imagine it just kind of opens up in the back like a clamshell thing, so they can ride or they can hop out if they want to. But yeah, it's just like a, Aww, it's got uh, a, doggy a platform door. on her back they can ride on if they want to. <laughs> so if they have to get out of danger, high top can get them out. Got like a little dog okay. and cat door for you. Yeah, I imagine it's like an open window. She sticks that baby on board, little suction cup thing on her backpack. <laughs> <laughs> That's so fun. Um, so in this room, it might feel kind of weird because it's the first time since um, the ship that y'all have been in a cybertronian and scaled room. Um, there are smaller switches down um, on a lower level, on human level, probably for the pretenders to use. But um, this is a cybertronian scaled building. Uh, this is the, probably the first time in a long time y'all have been one that's not this ship. There and there's a data pad on the wall. What do y'all want to do? There's a data pad and another door on the wall. What do y'all want to do? Um, I think what Pachop's gonna do is just kind of slipping into mission mode. She's probably gonna walk over to the door and just like gently press her head against it, trying to hear if anything's going on on the opposite side. You hear a mixture of sounds. You kind of hear industrial sounds of things like m machinery moving and clinking around. Steam sounds from like water being vented through pipes. And you hear some human sized footsteps and then um, some big like tick, 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 sounds which are probably gotcha. ins insecticons. Yeah, she's going to communicate all that back to the group. Mm -hmm. Very kind of matter of factly. I hear three units, human, like that kind of thing. Just like go through like a little list. Mm -hmm. As a, as she reports that high top, high tops on the data pad, basically name searching, uh, drop kick shatter and blitzwing to figure out what's going on and how they're not dead. Um, give me a three purple computer check. Oh, high tops really bad at those. <laughs> That's <laughs> a failure and two disadvantages. A failure and two disadvantages. Um, you get a locked out screen. It's like bam, bam. <laughs> garbage. <laughs> Well, this doesn't have anything <laughs> on it. Anyone else can try to check, too. <laughs> Does anyone else want to try the data pad, or are we just locked out? <laughs> What's the uh, negative repercussion itself? Tr like, say, failing three times at the data pad. Is it like a security thing or something? I would say if y'all fail three times, a lot will go off. Much like if I fail three times, I have to reset my Google password. All right, then Jump Kick <laughs> wants to try. Jump kick wants to yeah. check. All right, All right. Purple. just so you over. know, the password is not shockwave rules xx. I already tried that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, jump kick stops after hearing that and goes, "Oh, well, there goes my shot." <laughs> yeah, he, he backs out the password. <laughs> <laughs> but I will suggest. I love Cybertronians being like advanced idiots, <laughs> like suit. <laughs> Best technology in the world, but still use like Shockwave XX as a password. <laughs> uh, hold on, let me let me actually check my. Like, I'm sure I'm bad at computers. <laughs> Who knows? Actually, what what is what is, is that actually called? Computers? It's an intelligence uh, skill. Oh yeah, he's not very intelligent. Uh, I mean, I'll try it anyway. Just to high top has three purple on computers. I only have two green in computers. Uh, whose character sheet is it? <laughs> Spike. <laughs> Spike. <laughs> Spike's good at computers. How many uh how many <laughs> purples am I supposed to do for computers? Three. Three purples. Let's try it. It's a wash, so I did just go like, well, there goes my try. <laughs> um you can use uh strain <laughs> to make it a success if you want. Um yeah, sure. We'll do that. What's how much strain was that? Um a strain? So if you run out of strain, um, you black out, but you can use- I'm gonna let y'all use it to make, um, Wash's, um, successes. I just come okay. up- Cool. Wait, try facts and logic. He's one of those types of losers. <laughs> <laughs> so mark one strain off and you can get it. Do you want to do that? Got it, yep. Now the seven. Right. So you type in, uh, facts and logic, uh, 
Jump kick has sweat beating down his forehead. <laughs> <laughs> and it goes bam bam beep and it like turns green. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like his password facts and logic. Uh, it actually says like admin access granted because <laughs> that's your <Shocker's> password. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> so, uh, flipping through, it shows you a map of the facility. There is the map shows a prisoner hold, a cargo hold, um, and then a list of rooms uh, labeled as projects. One that's labeled uh, pretender research. One says project five shot. One says Cybertronian cloning. One says Energon conversion. One says long range drone control. And the last one says Cybertronian sensor overrides and control. Hey, I don't like the sound of that last one, but also. <laughs> I like to think that we're all huddled around looking at it. <laughs> this like tiny screen. <laughs> like it's yeah. to y'all the size of like an iPad. <laughs> all, all of these are bad. Uh, so, what do we want to do? There's Energon. I don't like the sound of override and control. Um, I don't know what Project Five Shot is, but that sounds like somewhere you'd find a T-Cog. I'm grinning furiously. <laughs> just Willis has just given us a cornucopia, a whole wonderful mixed chocolate box of trouble we can get into. <laughs> I told you it he has be planned that. for us. <laughs> Shockwave does bad things. To- good and bad people. <laughs> Alright, so so I'd like to remind everyone that um, Jump Kick's main thing is that he's dumb before I say that going along with the same style of sneaking sneaking in in a cartoonish way, Jump Kick is going to suggest that we should split up to cover more ground. No. <laughs> oh, God. Absolutely not. <laughs> I sent the list of um, what y'all found and to the Discord, just so I don't have to keep rereading, rereading a big list. I'm sure that's not entertaining. Um, I'm just so hey, no one forgets what there is. Hey, Watch Mojo would like to disagree with you on big list being entertaining or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, High Top roots through her backpack and pulls out this one board game with a picture of a knight and the dragon on the front. Listen, I've learned one thing from this, and it's that you do not split up. It goes real bad. <laughs> <laughs> D&D so is like, a thing in our game high top this plays it <laughs> uh, what is high top and jump kicks a home game I need to know <laughs> that'll that'll be the patreon stretch goal is a game of D&D played in characters high top and jump kick <laughs> <laughs> yes and like freaking like pot shot joins in during a session too and it's just the entire episode is just her with the player's manual, like, asking so, questions about everything. That means I have to DM a game of High Top DMing a I game. I think I would DM that <laughs> as High Top DMing a game for Spike, Potshot, and Jump Kick. Yep. <laughs> Amazing. You hear that, people? Get us a Patreon a, and we'll do that. That's a really good idea, actually. <laughs> Sounds like a great That's time. a great special <laughs> episode. <laughs> Alright, so which one of these scary rooms y'all want to go to? Prisoner holds, Regarding car holds, the list, um, I think if sci-fi. anyone's going to ask Hotshot's opinion, I mean, she'll go wherever anyone else is going, but if anyone's going to ask her opinion, she's going to be interested in the Energon conversion one. Mm-hmm. Just like, because everything else is going to happen is going to happen, but they do kind of need Energon to survive at this point. Yeah. Like, she's viewing this as, like, a resource gathering mission, so. Yeah, I... I agree. I do want to check out Project Five Shot. I remember when I was getting my conversion, they called that uh, Project Three Shot. So I'm a bit curious as to what <laughs> what this is. <laughs> one less than six shot. <laughs> yeah, that's one shot less. <laughs> uh, Bird and Spike. The Patreon to... stretch goal will be called Project One Shot. They got <gasps> to the five shot, yes. and then they realized it wasn't cool enough, so they added the wind one. <laughs> uh, so Burns and uh, Spike are just like looking up at y'all, looking at this to them like a giant flat screen TV to you as tiny iPad. <laughs> mm-hmm. So it sounds like y'all want to go to the Energon conversion. Yeah, we'll do that, and then we'll do Five Shot if that's cool with y'all. Okay. Uh, Jump Kick says, "What's what's wrong with splitting up?" 
<laughs> if something goes wrong, we're we're better as a team. You you remember? I was thinking everyone was just gonna be walking away, and he's like, "What, what what's wrong with what I said?" <laughs> now hmm. you remember when you were a barbarian and you ran off ahead of me, and the dragon killed you, and I couldn't heal you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I imagine it'll be like that. <laughs> Podshot has no idea what they're referring to. It's just standing there like, what? <laughs> oh, I can play Spike playing a character. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what she said. Yeah, I think. <laughs> it's it. all coming together. Come on, guys, Patreon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, back on the task at hand. Uh, if y'all want to go to the... Uh, <laughs> Uh, if you want to leave the room, there'll be a, a just another group stealth check for y'all to navigate. Um, I can say that y'all can copy the map onto like a wrist pad or something like that. High Top quickly scrawls it down on her arm in permanent marker. My wrist pad's broken. <laughs> Pachats. <laughs> on the other arm is the list of projects. Pachats' arm panel has a cracked screen. <laughs> Jump kick just looks over at uh, High Top's arm and goes, like, "Yep, that's right." <laughs> <laughs> Since he always just relies on her having all the info, it's like, ah, oh, yeah, she's got it. <laughs> and I'm a moron. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, the so the blind. <laughs> everyone, give me a uh, three purple stealth check, and same thing as before, same rules as before. Ooh, ooh, that. four successes and one threat. Ooh, that's good for a group check. Three successes and four disadvantages. One advantage and three failures. God. <laughs> uh, but everyone else has enough to offset it, so you're actually you're good. I'm just imagining her creaking really badly, and like them having to like lift or move her. <laughs> her joints just got crumpled really bad, so like things that usually wouldn't creak are creaking. <laughs> okay, so how many threats did y'all have? Four. Uh, I didn't have any. So I got one. Four. So that's five threats total, I think. Five. Okay, as y'all are sneaking uh, sneaking down this hallway to go to um, inner drawn conversion. Um, room. Y'all pass two Insecticons and two um, Pretenders. The Insecticons look like large stag beetles, or large rhinoceros beetles, carrying boxes, and the uh, Pretenders are kind of armed guards following these guys around. But y'all kind of duck and weave into into other rooms in the area, um, ducking back out. A lot of it's just like general storage, nothing of like real interest in there. But y'all are able to avoid them the whole way there. But give me... Anyone can do it. Give me a... Let's see how many it would be. A perception check. Um, a three purple perception check. I got a success and a disadvantage. A success and a wash. disadvantage. Okay. Um, I mean, Y'all gave all this information to the humans, correct? Like, what you found and where? Yeah, they're part of the team. Yeah. And, Audrey, you said you got a success? Yeah. Uh, Burns is gone. Burns snuck off. I guess that's easy for him to do because he's behind my back. And he's a generic soldier. <laughs> and um, you kind of check on your person. He took that other block of C4 with, with him The one too. that was in my chest? Yeah. Probably took at some point when y'all were uh, dealing with the big crab. Yeah, I realize he's gone when I check in with Spike and Spike's with alone. And immediately panic and start going for that C4 in my chest because I don't want him to blow me up. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's gone. It's not in there. You probably took it when y'all were uh, sneaking around in the I ocean. Run him over. Uh, well, this will be a teamwork discussion <laughs> later. If Burns blows our cover, I apologize for trusting him. Spike's like, what? The, where? Where'd he go? He like, went next he, to he him. Leave? Um, he's just kind of like dirt darting around. <laughs> All right. Um, I think after that, Spike follows even closer near. Uh, uh, high top, yeah. Even closer in your high top. Mm. I think I... And uh, Spike has his bat out. <laughs> <laughs> I think I pick him up and let him sort of sit on the backpack if he wants to. So he has a good view of everything. <laughs> nice. I can't stay mad at this vomit child. I love him so much. <laughs> vomit child. Okay, so inner John conversion. So y'all make it to um, make it to the room pretty safely. Um, you have to point out some of the um, insecticons and whatnot to uh, pot shot to avoid uh, failing the stealth check. But y'all y'all made it here, no problem. There is a it's a large room, but it's taken up by an even like larger machine. 
there's not a lot of walking around space. Um, there's kind of just the narrow hallway, once again, Cyberturvian scale, that leads along this machine. And it has this almost big funnel intake that is covered in like gasoline and oil and different earth fuels. And at the end is a belt. And while it's running, you can see it's kind of processing that those earth fuels and turning them into uh, energon cubes. It's good energon. It's not the purest in the world. It has a uh, definitely a fainter pink glow than the stuff y'all found at the uh, in session one. Probably because it's technically artificial energon, but it's energon just kind of getting rolled out of this machine. Hotshot's gonna see that, and there's just a very bright glint behind her visor. I looked to Hotshot to follow their lead because this was <laughs> very important to them and us. But I don't want to step on their plan. I'm, I'm trying to think if she's just going to go running right in or not. It's like, you know, yes, it would have happened beforehand, but she's also almost already died today. Like, maybe just take it a little bit more carefully, walking into the room, but very clearly excited. Um, give <laughs> like, me a Finally some good check. food. <laughs> maybe just a, a two purple perception check to see what you can tell about this machine. Uh, pot okay. shot. Alright. Uh, three successes. Three successes? Um, you know that this is... I, it, it is what it is. It's a uh, energon like conversion machine. By some of the like labels and buttons that are labeled on it, you think this was like almost like the working prototype of what they are using at the military base. This isn't making their energon in bulk, but it's like the the Mark One of whatever's going on on the energon base, uh, not on the military base. It's putting out like a small amount of energon. Um, but you can kind of quickly imagine if you scaled this up to a military base size, you could um, be putting out boxes and boxes of energon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's going to kind of like turn to the others and like realizing that Burns isn't there just kind of goes to like the next person in kind of the chain of command and just kind of goes, uh, hi top, I think I know what they might be using in space. Oh Primus, I'm the leader, I forgot. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> De facto leader. <laughs> Wait. Nobody else wants the job. <laughs> okay, so this is definitely what's going on at that base. Will High Top writes down on her arm, uh, stop military base question mark. Uh in Cybertronian glyphs. <laughs> I don't think we can take this whole thing. We can definitely stock up on fuel though. Maybe break it if we wanted to. <laughs> I, you definitely can't take the whole machine, but you can take as much energon as you as you can fit in your backpack. <laughs> Say no more. <laughs> pop, pops open her backpack, and uh, yeah, sorry, Spike. I guess this will take up your sitting room, but uh, just let's jump kick and pot shot to sort of stack the backpack with energon cubes. Mm-hmm. So, um, pot shot has a couple of different ways that she carries her stuff. So, like on one leg in like the uh, boot pocket where she's keeping her knife on the other one there's an empty one she's just gonna start like trying to shove a cube in there realize it's too big by just like a few inches and then like just throw a few in her backpack (laughs) (laughs) it's like probably cracking one open a bit and like doing what she did before and just smothering some of it onto her faceplate does it soak (laughs) in (laughs) We've established that it doesn't, but she keeps doing it. She just kind of, like, looks at her and just, like, thinks for a second and goes, yes. <laughs> I, I assume that's after uh, you load up the, the, the party pack mule with a bunch of energon cubes. Oh, yeah. We have, like, three whole cases of Kool-Aid at this point. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to put any numbers on it, but y'all have enough, like, a couple weeks worth of this stuff. Maybe not even a week. You have like, enough. There's enough to recover, and then enough to have extra. Yeah. So I close up the backpack, and you can see, like, a pink glow coming from inside the door. <laughs> <laughs> how, how is Spike responding to all this? Because, like, he had an Energon sample. How, how is he responding to having the whole factory right here? He says, uh, I think he's like, Hey, high top. Can you pass me one? I've never seen it like this. Only the the rock yeah, I sure. found. I pass him one. Toss him a giant cube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's um like bigger than basketball size. Like maybe two basketballs. Definitely um hard to hold. Definitely using two hands to hold it up. Um, it seems heavy to him. Um, and it um it zaps him a little bit, and he's like, yeah, and he uh, drops it. Uh, I catch it. 
So how does this, uh, I got, I got a question on how this Energon works. Is it like that, like the first episodes of the cartoon where it was like a liquid inside like cubes or is it just solid crystal cube? Like, yeah, I think it's a liquid inside, inside a cube. Yeah. Okay. Um, kind of yeah, shaking around. Hot shot cracked it open a little bit, like a water bottle and <laughs> smeared some on her face. <laughs> <laughs> like a coconut from a starving, uh, uh, castaway. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Just like, Yeah. <laughs> Um, Spike says, he's like, oh man, that's, the, the other one didn't shock me. I don't know what's up with this, uh, but it's also not a solid, I don't know. And he, uh, lets you, lets you take it. Well, that one also came from a pretty, uh, low potential loser, so I can imagine, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the continual roast of Blitzwing. Of Blitzwing. Oh, it'll, it'll pay off. Um... <laughs> So we'll leave this episode off on it's not as extreme cliffhanger as we have been doing, but uh, Spike being like, so is there any difference between I don't know natural energon for y'all and uh, handmade, not manmade, but handmade energon? I have no idea, honestly. Uh, jump kick tossing away the uh, milk jug of homemade brew that they've been surviving off of. <laughs> mashed, up, mashed up space oysters and gasoline <laughs> yeah and replace it with a cube uh, he only has like one storage space which is his like car mode uh, driver's seat he just puts it behind his back and it's like not that I can tell <laughs> <laughs> and so I think it, the camera fades out of y'all loading up with a handmade energon or whatever y'all want to call it <laughs> the good stuff. Manner job <laughs> stuff. High top drinks some. Manor job. Like, eh, pours a little gasoline in it and then drinks it. <laughs> <laughs> Spikes it. She's gotten so used to the moonshine at this point. <laughs> this inner John isn't spicy enough. <laughs> <laughs> She's got a taste for uh, southern cooking. <laughs> <laughs>